Dear saints in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanksgiving, if you really stop and think about it, is primarily, first and foremost, a celebration of God's faithfulness. Let me say that again. Thanksgiving is primarily, first and foremost, a celebration of God's faithfulness. I realize that isn't necessarily normally how we think about Thanksgiving, but if you just stop for a minute or two and think about it, then I think you'll see that it's true. Here in Canada, we celebrate Thanksgiving on this second weekend in October because it's around this time of year that the crops are being gathered in from the farmer's fields. Those of us who live in cities, towns, suburbs, places like that might not be as connected to this agricultural side of Thanksgiving as those who live on the country, in the country and make their living growing crops, raising animals and things like that. But that is still why we celebrate Thanksgiving when we do. The simple fact, however, that the earth continues year after year after year to produce crops that can be gathered in, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The simple fact that this happens, this process of planting and growing and harvesting happens every single year is a sign of God's faithfulness. The fact that we can gather up food, an abundance of food on a weekend like this, and celebrate with family and friends is a sign that God has been faithful, that God has kept his promise. Way back in Genesis chapter 8, right after Noah and his family exited the ark and offered a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God, God made a promise. Well, actually, God made a few promises way back then. He made, of course, the promise sealed with the rainbow in the sky, never to flood the earth again. That's the promise we all remember. But that's not the only promise God made way back then. God also made this promise. He said to Noah, As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Or in other words, God promised that as long as this earth continues to exist until the day when our Lord Jesus comes again, raises our bodies from the dead and ushers in a new heaven and a new earth, until that day, the seasons that the earth goes through year after year will keep on going. That is God's promise that he made to Noah. Crops will be planted in the spring, for example, and they will grow throughout the summer and they will be harvested in the fall. That is God's promise. Now, this promise doesn't exclude the possibilities of droughts and famines happening in various places at various times. We had one of those in our Old Testament reading today. It was a a drought, a famine, that sent Elimelech and his family off to Moab, where one of his sons married this young woman, Ruth, and you get this whole long story that spins off of that. But on the whole, God's promise is that the earth will continue to produce It's crops. It's food that we need in order to survive, for us to eat and to enjoy. It takes hard work on the part of farmers to make that happen, but it's God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness to his promise that really makes those crops grow. It's God's faithfulness sending sun, or rain and sunshine, heat and cold at their proper times, which ensure that those crops grow. Thanksgiving, therefore, is primarily, first and foremost, a celebration of God's faithfulness. As the crops are gathered in, we rejoice in the knowledge that God has once again kept that promise he made to Noah all those years ago, and we celebrate his faithfulness. As we celebrate Thanksgiving this year, however, and give thanks to God for his faithfulness over this past year, Our epistle reading today shows us that God's faithfulness runs even deeper than we begin to realize. Listen again to these words from the end of our epistle reading today. The Apostle Paul writes, If we are faithless, 
he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Paul tells us here that faithfulness is right at the core of who God is. God is faithful. He has to be faithful because that is who he is. He can't deny himself or go against his own nature. God, at his very heart, is faithful. So much so that when we're not faithful, Paul introduces that idea here. We're going to have to unpack that a little more in just a second. But when we're not faithful, God is so faithful that his faithfulness endures our unfaithfulness. God remains faithful because that's who he is. He can't deny himself. Now, when Paul wrote these words in our epistle reading today, he wasn't thinking specifically about God being faithful in the realm of agriculture, you know, causing crops to grow up and things like that. Although, as we'll see, he does mention hardworking farmers in our reading today as well. But as we begin to unpack what Paul's saying here about God's faithfulness, perhaps this agricultural stuff is a good place for us to start. We've already said that God is faithful in causing crops to grow up in the fields so that they can feed us throughout the year. But what about us? Have we been faithful in our use of these gifts that God has given to us? We're good at giving thanks, or at least putting on the appearance of thankfulness, on a weekend like this one. But have we been faithful in thanking God, the Lord our God, all the year round for the abundance that he provides each and every day? Have we been faithful in using these gifts, the abundance of gifts that the Lord our God gives to us each and every day, not just to take care of our own wants or needs, but to serve the needs of others? Have we been faithful in using this daily bread that God gives to us every day in a way that would be pleasing to him? There are perhaps times and ways in which we have done that kind of thing. But I think this is where our faithlessness begins to show a little bit, doesn't it? We're not always thankful. That's why we put a weekend on the calendar to make sure we do it. We don't always use what we have to serve the needs of others instead of serving our own needs. And yet, God remains faithful. Even though we're so often unthankful, even though we so often fail to share the abundance that we have with others in need, God, our faithful God, continues year after year, day after day, to open his hand and satisfy our daily needs. He causes the sun, his sun, to shine on the good and the evil alike. He causes the rain to fall in its due time, regardless of whether or not we've been faithful or unfaithful. When we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Like I said, however, Paul wasn't necessarily thinking about God's faithfulness in the realm of agriculture when he wrote these words to Timothy. No, Paul was thinking more about God's faithfulness to us as we seek to live our lives as his people, as Christians in this world. Paul encourages Timothy in our reading today to be faithful in his calling as a pastor and as a Christian. He urges Timothy to think of himself like a soldier who has been enlisted in Jesus' army and whose primary goal in life is to please the one who enlisted him, to please his Lord Jesus, to do what his Lord Jesus would have him do. He urges Timothy to think of himself like an athlete who has to work hard and train his body and compete according to the rules if he wants to win the prize. There's no cheating, no shortcuts 
Paul says, when it comes to being a Christian and living your life in this world. There's no way to snap your fingers and just make it easy. And finally, Paul urges Timothy to think of himself like a farmer. It's the hardworking farmer who gets the first share of the crops, he says. And he's not just talking here about God's faithfulness to farmers or something like that. But his point is that farmers work hard to get the fruit of their labor. And living your life as a Christian in this world is going to take hard work too. With these three different pictures, images, Paul urges Timothy to be faithful. To be faithful in his life as a Christian and as a pastor. And so, as we did when we thought about things in the realm of agriculture, it's fitting, I think, as we think about Paul's words to Timothy here, to ask ourselves whether or not we've been faithful in these aspects of our Christian lives as well. For example, have we faithfully sought to please our Lord Jesus, the commander who has enlisted us into his army, in everything we think, say, and do? Or have we focused instead on pleasing ourselves? Or pleasing the people around us whose opinions we value and think are more important maybe than others? Or have we faithfully sought to keep and do all our Lord Jesus has commanded us to do? Or have we looked for shortcuts, easier ways to get around the hard business of loving your neighbor as yourself? Have we faithfully worked hard in the callings our Lord Jesus has given to us? I think here again, our tendency towards faithlessness starts to show itself. And yet, our Lord Jesus remains faithful. Our Lord Jesus remains faithful to the promise that he made to us in holy baptism, the promise that when we died with him there, that's what happened when we got baptized. We died with Jesus. We were baptized into his death. His promise that when we died with him there in baptism, he would raise us to new life. And not just once on the day when it happened some long time ago when you were an itty bitty little baby, but every single day, that's his promise to you. And so that's what he does. Every single day when you roll yourself out of bed, Here's this new life risen from the dead that your Lord Jesus is giving to you. Why? Because you're faithful? No. Because he's faithful. He cannot deny himself. Our Lord Jesus is faithful in his promise to us to forgive our sins. As we said at the outset of the service here this morning, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so he does. Each and every time we confess our sins, each and every time we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Each and every time we say in our hearts to the Lord that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, he forgives us. He says to you today, your sins are forgiven. Why? Because you're faithful? No, because he is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Our Lord Jesus is faithful to the promise that he made to his disciples in the upper room when he shared that last supper with them on the night on which he was betrayed. That supper, that sacrament that we call Holy Communion, he's faithful to his promise that he made there. He's faithful to be present among us, even here now, even today, with his own body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. He's present to feed us with this meal, which may seem meager, just a little piece of bread and a little sip of wine but which actually far surpasses any kind of Thanksgiving feast that we ever have put together for ourselves or will ever put together for ourselves because it's a foretaste, a preview, a sample of his feast, the marriage feast in the land of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. He's faithful to that promise. Not because you are faithful, but because he is faithful. For he cannot deny himself. And finally, our Lord Jesus is faithful to his promise that on that day when this world does eventually come to an end 
right? God said that to Noah way back then. This world's not going to go on forever, but until it does, the seasons are going to keep on going. But when that end comes, our Lord Jesus has made a promise to you that when his feet stand again upon this earth, he will raise your body from the dead and gather you into the great and final harvest once and for all the harvest of God's people as they are gathered into his kingdom forever. He'll do that for you. Why? Because you're faithful? Because he's faithful. For he cannot deny himself. All this faithfulness is God's faithfulness to us. The Father's faithfulness in sending his Son. The Son's faithfulness in doing the fa- his Father's will, going even to the cross. Faithfulness even unto death on a cross. And the Spirit's faithfulness, working new life in faithless little you, day after day after day. Thanksgiving is primarily, first and foremost, a celebration of God's faithfulness. And we certainly have much to celebrate. Because if we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding start our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.